What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Best Show Ever Pod. I'm Cam. I'm your host. And this is the podcast where we interview people about the best concert they ever saw in their life. Uh, and this this episode is a special one. This is we interview the source of my musical taste. We interview the guy who got me and my brothers started on seeing live shows when we were very young. We interview my dad on this episode, um, and it's a great conversation. We we go into his prolific uh, concert going career. Uh, he He's seen a ton of Pink Floyd shows. He's seen almost every single Rush tour. Uh, a lot of Almond Brothers. We get into some Queen. We get into some Who. We talk about seeing shows in Chicago uh, in the 70s and 80s and Alpine Valley in the 80s. Uh, we talk about our concert going experience together. Um, my dad is a uh, football coach. He is a restaurant owner. He owns a Rosati's Pizza in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Um, and he uh, splits his time these days between Oconomowoc, Wisconsin and uh, Gator Point, Florida, which is where he is uh, for this episode. I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, we did a video chat, but uh, sit back and relax and enjoy this uh, conversation between me and my dad about concerts. Uh, but first, enjoy some music from none other than Jesus and Fartfinger. This is the best show ever. This is the best show ever. This is the best show, the best show ever. This is the best show. The best show I ever heard. I think I have to agree. I love it. We're going to talk about uh, <laughs> we're going to we're going to talk about like Chicago and Wisconsin this whole time. And then you're going to be sitting in Florida and I'm in L.A. So <laughs> <laughs> we're not even locals anymore. No, I'm kind of glad <laughs> to with the air scene in Milwaukee. We're glad to be here on the clean ocean front. That's the same in Chicago. It's like orange skies. Kyle said it was really bad. He had to work outside. He said it was terrible. So, yeah, ba bad air quality. Which is like, that's the whole reason of living in Wisconsin is because you're out in the middle of nowhere. You're not in bad air quality. I got bad air quality all the time. I live in L.A. So, Right. You know that going in. But yeah, Wisconsin's supposed to have crisp, clean air. And, you know, Chicago's not bad. It's not L.A. wise. But yeah, both of them are really bad right now. Yeah. What else has been up? What are you listening to right now? What am I listening to right now? Dwayne yeah. Betts has a new... EP out and he recorded it at Susan Tedeschi and Derek Trucks' studio down in Jacksonville and it's called Stare at the Sun and it's just uh, I think he's only got one song that's released right now but it's coming out really soon and it's really really good so I like everybody should check that out but apparently when Dwayne Betts was a little kid Derek Trucks told him that his dad played God guitar was the only uh guy that he ever heard that was afraid to stare at the sun not afraid to stare at the sun so that's where Dwayne came up with the uh, title for the ep and it's pretty good stuff so man yeah so that's what we're cool. listening to right now marcus king band obviously oh, yeah. the trucks um i am the moon stuff but that was kind of last summer but we're still always into that going to see him in a couple weeks here and then we're going to New York for the Madison Square Garden show. So that's going to be sweet. Sweet. Yep. Wish we could go to Boston too, but this is not going to happen. So we're going to come out and see you, Mr. Cam, in LA instead. But we're still going to make Sorry. it to New York. So <laughs> Sorry to ruin the tour. No, no, no. I'm good. <laughs> so. Well, we're going to get into your, your best show ever. And we'll get into some honorable mentions too. But... Um, before we do that, I, I kind of want to do first and worst show with you. So your first concert you ever saw um, and your worst concert you ever saw. Well, the first I ever saw, I didn't pay for technically. Um, if you grew up in Schaumburg, you drove around, there's only a couple things to do. You either tried to sneak into Walter Payton's Disco Studebakers, which for a bunch of white guys like us, didn't really go over too well. So, or you went down the street to um, Beginnings, where the drummer from Chicago had a bar there, and everybody played there. Sticks, Regent, Bob Seger, Ario Speedwagon, 
all these people before that they were big. So we would sneak in and get in there. But the shirt, first show I actually paid for was Rush. And I saw them at the Bra Room in Chicago. And that was awesome. Was hooked ever since. Um, when you, when going, you say the Bra Room, for people who are not from Chicago, what that's Aragon Ballroom, right? Yeah, the Aragon Ballroom. Really cool arena. Super cool. Um, but back in the 70s, it was really kind of a weird setup, of course, before all the people got um, killed at the Who. We didn't know that about general mission concerts, but you would sit in the back alley and party and have a and great time with people all day long. You had your little blanket squared out, and then everybody was, you know, great, very cordial, sharing whatever between the crowd. And then all of a sudden the doors opened, and it was a total madhouse. Yeah. So it was not good. And it's like 2,000 people trying to fit through a two man door. And like, you know, so that was, that was kind of weird. But once you got in there, it was awesome. And that was like 1976. We're talking. April Wine opened up for them. And April Wine, of course. Who doesn't yeah. remember April Wine? <laughs> yeah. It was right between 2112 and All the Worlds of Stage came out. And it was absolutely incredible so that was my first show or my first series of shows and then uh my worst show mr cam i think you might have been there with me i hate yeah, to say it's it. sad i don't want to say this in a live recording but uh listen did we do this we do, yeah the all-star band disappointed me i was very lucky to see one of the first all-star band performances that Ringo did on the first tour with George Harrison and some other guys, Bob Dylan. I mean, and that was like really, really good. And then yeah. when I took you to see that, that might have been the most expensive ticket I had ever paid up to date in my life when we went to see him. And I'll, remember, he was rude to Todd Rundgren on stage. And he was rude know, to the I, audience. Yeah, he was rude to the audience. I'm Ringo. He was Star. like, I, I can't read your sign. <laughs> Remember that lady had a sign up and he's like, I can't read that. The lights are at me, love. It's like <laughs> that's the scene. Yeah. So not the same as seeing Paul McCartney. Let's put it that way. No. Yeah, <laughs> so I hate to throw that on Ringo. Everybody loves the Beatles. Everybody loves Ringo. But I, you know, and certainly I've probably seen some worse shows over the years, but for the price and spending time with you, that was except for now we get to laugh about it. So we do get to laugh about it. I will anytime any of my friends have seen Ringo or I've talked to someone who are like, it'll it'll happen every once in a while. Someone's like, you know what we just saw this year? Ringo Star. And it was unbelievable. And I was like, <laughs> unbelievable bad or unbelievable good. <laughs> and they're like, good. What do you mean? I'm like, well, I, I you didn't know. see my show. I maybe a bad night. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, that didn't even of, that didn't even compare to seeing Paul McCartney. Or like I said, the one the first time when he had George Harrison and Bob Dylan and um, a bunch of guys like that, Buddy Guy, Junior Wells. So that was just a yeah. that was truly an all-star uh, beat. George Harrison, Bob Dylan, Buddy Guy, a little different than the dudes from Toto. No respect to disrespect to Toto. Yeah. A little different than Todd Rundgren. No disrespect to Todd Rundgren, but yeah. And a I don't different the other guys that he berated on stage because they weren't Beatles, but it was not good. But anyway, enough too much of that. Let's uh let's move on. Yeah. What a, so so your first the first concert ever was the the Rush show? Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, I mean, if you count seventh grade when I wandered up to Atcher Pool to see Sticks, but because they were in Chicago, oh, and that, that was um, that was like totally awesome. That was when Lorelai was out, and back in the day, um, yeah, that was like when they were probably two or three Crystal Ball, all that stuff had just come out. So that was a long time ago. And uh, but we didn't pay. We just wandered up there and watched the band, and that was cool. But the first band I actually got to go see was Rush and Aragon Ballroom. Yeah, that was that was absolutely incredible, and been chasing that feeling ever since. Sometimes yeah. you find it, sometimes you don't. But it absolutely blew me away. Couldn't stop talking about it, you know. And uh, for three guys, it was just incredible. So, but uh, well, I mean, be before we oh, go ahead. You know, go ahead. You go ahead. I mean, before we go into your your honorable mention shows and your your best show ever, I mean, uh, to go see concerts and with your friends is a normal, it's a totally normal thing to do when you're younger. But you've carried that into your adult life. It's a huge part of what you do still now. You, I mean, you're you got a yeah. whole tour planned for the spring. 
or for the the summer what uh, so what is what kind of place does live music hold for you and what is it what does seeing a band live really mean to you um well you know me cam i'm a football coach or whatever but um wasn't ever coordinated enough to play any kind of instruments or every, anything but was always in love with it and a lot of my friends um i'll stop it you're a good guitar player but um, I, I do like i do like youth pastor guitar I got like, open, <laughs> I got like open chords i do some drunken ukulele so that's about it but um <laughs> anyway no it's uh you know it was one time it was like great times with your friends great memories you know it's um you learned a lot about life you had to go out there and negotiate for yourself how to buy tickets get tickets get in line get pushed around general admission concerts you know how to navigate cities before there is a direction in the palm of your hand run by a satellite right. to take you where to go so you were going to different states with your friends and stuff like that and even now uh you know we like to do that when we're on vacation and see different bands whether you're paying to see somebody live or just going to uh small you know bars and stuff like that around the country which are far, uh, finding harder and harder to find but you know yeah. just see some side music and stuff that salt shed in chicago just opened up that's interesting we want to get down there but yeah. uh, you know it's a way to meet new people too you know when you're out there you i've met some really great people over the years so um to me it's you know it's everything I, you know there's it's the basis of my life you know is you know those are my recreations i considered football more of a work thing because of you know whatever but you know football and golf or football golf and, and music those are about the only in pizza those are about the only things that i, I know anything about so <laughs> well i mean the, the pizza store and you know the football that was work for you that's work and so this yeah. concerts have always felt like you, you don't really have skin in the game you don't really want to be a part of it other than being there to have fun you know right and everybody wants to meet celebrities and you know in chicago we you know you're lucky enough to get backstage here or there and you know had nancy wilson offer me a rose and tried to get me to get in the women's zine and stuff like that it was totally sweet hearts, hearts yeah. nancy wilson yeah that was awesome and uh Whoa. keith saying that we just missed roger waters going up through the buffet line when we were backstage for roger waters doing the dark side of the moon tour i was like what are you talking about we just missed roger waters going through so you know stuff like that and uh you know one of the best ones ever was um not the greatest show that i saw but one of the fondest memories was you know before i was married to mom she got tickets to go see white snake and she was kind of rubbing it in my face and i wasn't really a big white snake fan at the time but uh did have respect for vivian campbell and adrian vandenberg so you know, mom's telling me that she's going. Well, lo and behold, one of my friends is a doorman at the local Hyatt, and that's where White State ended up staying. So I don't know how he got tickets from them. He helped them out and got some tickets somehow, some way. I don't know how, but uh, we ended up going backstage for that. So I kind of mom's got tickets. Get, kind of gave got tickets in the crowd. crowd. Yeah, she's in the grass, and I'm like, she's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, I don't know, maybe going backstage. So we'll see, the, we'll see if it works out. <laughs> at the end of the show we took turns taking the badge off and putting it on and going backstage we got like six people back there and there you uh, go. yeah it was great but um yeah so about 4 30 in the morning we're saying goodbye to those guys the guys from the band she took, we took them out and showed them this local bar out in the woods in Schomburg that they didn't know about and uh they came out there with us it was great so about 4 30 in the morning adrian vandenberg's trying to get mom to go on the tour bus with them so that's when I knew that I had a keeper. Mom was like, no, I'm with this guy right here. So <laughs> oh, there you go, mom. Man, this close. I know. This... <laughs> so no, that over your head. That, like the roadie for Tommy Aldridge gave me some drums that he played, th drumsticks that he played that night. And you know, that st stuff like that. that. You know, those are memories that you have forever. So that's what music brings. Yeah. Man, does mom still hold that over your head a little bit? She's like. I was never going to go with that guy ever. That's what she said. <laughs> right. I know, right? Yeah. Six, five, blonde hair, down the middle of his back, millions of dollars, jet plane. Just rock, rocked a huge show. Yeah. You know, no worries. <laughs> Man, what was that? What was that? What was that white snake scene like back then? Was that like, who was oh, at that show? It was crazy. Backstage, Rudy Sarzo, who ends up being the bass player for Ozzy and a lot of other people, a really good bass player, but he's signing girls' breasts. 
So yeah. it was it was nuts. So Uncle Eric, of course, takes his shirt off, and Rudy Sarzo signs Eric's shirt or signs his chest. It was the funniest thing ever, man. I mean, that's how we actually we were backstage, but that's when the band was like, "What are you? You guys are." We got a party with yeah. you guys. So, yeah, it was pretty Hell funny. Yeah. Yeah, so, Eric had Rudy Sarso ch- signed his chest. I don't know how long the hair. Gone for. Yeah. yeah. He should have used the Sharpie. It could have been there for a while. But, no, it was pretty funny, though. But, yeah, it was, you know, what do you think? David Coverdale, the MTV, big hair generation. Oh, there's tons of girls back there and tons of guys trying to get back there. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, a bunch of guys trying to show off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And you had the passes. You didn't even want to be there. And you had the Yeah, passes. no, but That's it was the coolest great. guy to be. Yeah, it was, you know, yeah, I, I appreciate it. So, yeah, yeah. It was some good Man. metal. But, yeah. Unreal. <laughs> well, um, it is it is very difficult to pick one best show of all time. And so that's why we, we do this little honorable mention section in here. So um, any any shows that you would be remiss if we didn't talk about a little bit um and i'll cap you at like five okay <laughs> i can't go all day and you've seen yeah. hundreds of thousands well of it's yeah, yeah it's really hard but um last almond brothers show at the beacon we didn't see him the last night we saw him the night before the last night and yeah. that was really awesome and the first time we when we saw him at the beacon another time and donald fagan from steely dan was there and Chad Smith from the Chili Peppers, oh, and man. Devin Allman sang Midnight Rider. Tom Hamilton from Aerosmith was there. Uh, the lead guitar player for a band called The Meters. I forget his name, but he's an incredible yeah. guitar player. He was there. It was all-star cast in New York for our first time at the Beacon, so I remember that show forever. Um, the Brothers at Madison Square Garden. Jamo put together a 50-year anniversary thing with only guys left that played in the band. You know, um, Mark Kionis, the percussionist that nobody gives enough credit for, for being in the Almond Brothers. O'Teal, obviously, Derek, Warren Haynes. Um, uh, the keyboard player, I'm losing his name right now, but he was the original keyboard player before um, Greg Allman. And then they put Greg Allman in the band because he knew his brother. No, I'm just kidding. And then I think Wyman went and played with uh, Stevie Ray in Double Trouble, so he didn't do too bad. And Chuck Laval, yeah. who did the original Jessica piano tunes, were there. He's played with everybody from Stones to Clapton to Roger Waters to, you know, David Gilmore. So that show for four hours, like the fourth row at Madison Square Garden, our first time at the Garden. And that was the day before COVID. We were getting dressed for the show, and Mom's like, so they can't play basketball tomorrow because of this virus, but we're going to go to a concert there tonight. And I was like, yeah, don't you feel lucky? <laughs> Nobody knew anything about it, right? <laughs> yeah. You're so, like, we have tickets, next, so. Yeah, then the next day they were like, everything's locked down, even the golf. I'm like, when they're locking down golf outside, this is serious. So, yeah. but that show right there, those those shows um, right there, um, obviously. I remember seeing, being on the phone with you. I was in Chicago and I was like, you guys should really get back from New York. Have you guys seen that show yet? And you're like, no, it's tonight. I was like, that, that's not, that's not good. You know? <laughs> I was like, I was like, they shut everything down in Chicago. It was already like, we weren't going back to work the next day. And you were like, just stoked on the phone talking about the show. That you were about to, you're like, we'll worry about that after I'm yeah. done with tonight. Any, anytime you can be in the presence of greatness of Derek Trucks, besides all those yeah. other guys that I mentioned, um you can't miss that so i didn't know that about the disease then and we won't get into that but yeah that was one of the you know that was one of the highlights and obviously um i'm a big rush fan so there's lots of really good ones the last tour that they did we saw them in kansas city got some big time barbecue and we also saw them up in uh, minneapolis st paul so but all you know we saw them pretty much every single tour that i did every single tour they did so it's hard to pick out any of those but those would probably be my runner-ups, you know, and everything Pink Floyd, seeing David Gilmore, both tours on an island, and the last one, Rattle That Lock. I mean, you got to see that, Mr. Cam, in Chicago. That's He's absolutely incredible. He's my favorite. And I haven't uh, missed a Roger Waters tour ever from the very first time he left and did pros and cons of hitchhiking with Eric Clapton and Phil Collins and all those guys all the way up until now. Um, got you got to see him do the wall tour with me there too. 
Um, don't sleep on Nick Mason, the drummer from Pink Floyd, because Soft Full of Secrets. He's doing all pre Floyd stuff before Dark Side of the Moon, or I mean, pre Dark Side stuff of Floyd that you can't see anybody doing. And yeah, he's, he's just doing like metal and cover all that. Go ahead. He was doing like metal and all that when we saw him. It was incredible. Yeah, his band is yeah. just anything Floyd I'm in for. So. And it was like a five piece. It was just a, it was a, you know, obviously when you go see Roger Waters, it's, you know, production value to the nth degree. And there's four guys on guitar and, you know, two drummers. And that is obviously epic to go see. But, you know, we saw Nick Mason in, was it Riverside Theater in Milwaukee yeah. or Pabst? Yeah. I mean, it's a smaller theater and it was like a five piece band with like a red light, a blue light and a green light. And that show oh, was... Uh, um um psychedelic light behind them just like the old days yeah. that's what we wanted it to be like the original pub days in england and playing that kind of sid barrett music and all that stuff so all those tours are runner-ups for me yeah those are those are my favorites so you gotta i you know so being from the midwest and alpine valley being my favorite venue that i ever got to go to do you have a favorite um alpine memory um probably seeing the who there the yeah. you know after the dead was there for a couple days and we pulled up there and then there was still a lot of people from the dead there so the parking lot had a lot of energy in it before the concert started and it was like you know a lot of energy we, and a lot of something else too probably yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so if you didn't have energy there was ways to find it yeah. around because there was so much in the air but yeah, anyway right but right. anyway there it was that was uh that was one of my favorites and that was you know not a that was one of their first fa farewell tours or whatever but you know to see the who at alpine valley that was absolutely incredible so and um yeah we had really good seats for that too and that like i said that's like in the mid 80s i'm talking about so we're you know maybe 85 so yeah. they were on a retirement tour but they're still playing now but that was yeah. one of the first tours that they did with Kenny Jones at drums after like Keith Moon passed away. So, and that would probably be my runner up show too, is like you, you're cutting me off. I know at five, but the first time I saw the who in Los Angeles was the in 1979. That was the year that they, you know, did tour without Keith Moon for the first time and Kenny Jones joined them and I got to see him in LA and that was probably, you know, up until my number one, my best show ever. So those two, both was of that, those uh, for, forum or la sports arena la sports arena yeah for you west coast people i've got no idea what that is <laughs> <laughs> cool yeah. so yeah that was all time that was an old time one so did it um for me nowadays it is easier for me to get tickets for the things that i want to see out here in la not i mean i moved here like a year ago and I feel like I've been able to see things really cheap. Where in Chicago, things some of these shows that I would have seen would have been like hundreds of dollars, or I wouldn't have been able to go at all. Um, was it? Do you think it was easier to see shows in like LA and San Diego back in the early '80s, late '70s? Uh, easier to see them here in San Diego or LA, or easier to see them in Chicago? Easier to see them in Chicago because I grew up there and I had connections. Yeah. So, you know, back then, Ticketmaster, um, you know, used to control the tickets like they do now, and they were sold through, you know, machines. So you would go to the local record store, and my friend happened to get a job there. So any band that we wanted to see, he would volunteer and open. And then you would sleep in line and in line at night like the guys do for Duke basketball. You know, and then when the thing opened up, you're the first ones in, and they'd start pulling tickets out of the machine, and whatever you got, you got. So Larry would do that, and then we would get tickets then. That's how we would get our tickets in Chicago. So that was much easier than when I went to San Diego and I didn't know anybody, and I had to actually go to Ticketmaster and stand in line. <laughs> so, <laughs> so to put it in the context for you kids out there who are buying stuff on Ticketmaster now, you get into a queue when you buy tickets now, yeah. right? So there was a literal queue outside. There's a literal line of people. A literal. And basically, and basically you and your buddies just kind of skipped the queue and got yes. your tickets right off the top. And ended up in the first 10 rows, mostly to all the shows that we saw while Larry worked there. So, it's called work in the system. Exactly. 
First ten yeah. tickets out of the machine came for were for our friends, and then every but then the regular public went on sale. Were you guys, <laughs> <laughs> were you guys like nice about it, or did you take those first two rows? Like you took the first. Well, row. you didn't always get the first two rows. You get fourth, fifth, because everybody in the country is buying them at the same time. Still, you know. Yeah, but I mean, but uh, then there's lots of there's a whole bunch of Ticketmaster locations, but we would go to the one, you know, Flipside Records where we used to buy our. Our, our records so we would go there and just wait in line there and you know you get there like maybe nine or ten o'clock at night and spend the night the whole night sometimes you take turns one guy'd go for a couple hours and somebody else go for a couple hours if you had to but then larry got a job there we figured it out and yeah did pretty well for ourselves so shout out larry yeah absolutely plus and you know there's a Chicago has, I don't know, um, I don't want to say bigger venues, but I felt like they had more venues in California than California did at the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's more shows going on, like side shows, not necessarily main headliners are, are going to all hit the same cities. But, you know, the auxiliary, you know, the two and 3,000 seat, seat places, you know, there seems like there's more of those in Chicago that you could do. Definitely. It feels like there's more um, like there's Hollywood Bowl and the Greek Theater and the Forum. And now there's SoFi Stadium and a bunch of bigger, you know, bigger venues. Um, but Chicago had more of the like Rivieras, the Aragon Ballroom, the Vic. The, the Vic. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, stuff like that. So those were, you know, those are smaller, you know, the Uptown Theater. Yeah. You know, those Uptown are theater, not not in not in service anymore. I know, but that's back in the day. That's when you were talking, you were asking me back then. So you can still walk by it. It's still standing up. It's in Uptown, the Uptown Theater, of course. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of really good venues in Chicago. But I got a, I have a feeling that uh, your best show isn't one of the ones that happened in Chicago. Believe it or not, um, my dad and I have talked a lot about my uh concerts and I, I this the best one i think i've heard about a, a few times i got a feeling that i know which the best one is <laughs> yeah you do because you've heard about it your whole life yeah and then we we're very blessed to uh get a recreation of it by roger waters yes but uh you know i like big pink floyd fan like i said Got to see the David Gilmore version after Waters left the band uh, three times, and that was incredible. Animals at Soldier Field was incredible, but it's 100,000 people. You know, the guys are the size of the Monopoly man. You can't really see him. You could hear him. You know, there's like video boards. Yeah, so that was different. But this was, you know, once again, LA Sports Arena um, inside. For the wall and the wall had come out and everybody had heard it and it was you know the first you you know side one all the way through side four it's one whole story you couldn't just listen to one song or whatever they didn't play parts of it on the radio back then so you know you just had every time you sat down you ended up listening to it all the way through and stuff and just became enamored with the story as a floyd fan and things like that and then heard it was coming and then heard that they were only going to do seven shows in London, seven in New York and seven in Los Angeles because they're going to do this extensive tour that they couldn't afford and cart it around the world back then. So I happened to be lucky enough to be in San Diego at the time. And I was first in line at Ticketmaster and my friend Larry was not running the thing. And I got the last row in the sports arena <laughs> and I was first in line. That's how fast tickets went. Uh, I'm like in two minutes they were gone and I got two tickets so I convinced um, one of my best friends to uh, drive me up there he was you know not really into that he had just had his first kid wasn't listening to a lot of Floyd he was more you know of the band and little feet and that kind of stuff like that he really wasn't into Floyd as much so but we ended up going up there and it was absolutely incredible it was more than you could possibly think of it was the first time that somebody had used quadraphonic sound inside so the you know the sound would go all the way around the room besides the plane smashing you know the surrogate band when they came out i'm looking through my binox because i'm so far back i'm like this is not floyd my friend's like what are you talking about I'm like this is not pink floyd He's like, will you shut up and watch the show? I'm like, I'm telling you, this is not Floyd. There's somebody else on the stage. And then sure enough, you know, 
it turns out to be that that was the surrogate band and then at the end of the song boom now there's eight guys on stage and i was like oh my gosh now there's floyd and you know from then on it was incredible so it was you know i don't think one of us said a word we got in the car and he's like i'm like what'd you think and he just turned and looked at me and gave me that david letterman kind of look so yeah. you know like the yeah. really stupid like are you serious look yeah and then i don't think one of us said a word the whole way home from los angeles to san diego two hours just sitting there no. going over the show in your head and then the next day he's like was that the most incredible thing you'll ever see and he's like i can't even tell anybody about it because you can't describe what happened i mean they built the wall blew the wall up we all know the story now but back then you didn't know the story and you didn't know what was going on and you know it was they were together back then it wasn't just roger waters like he is now he does a great version of it i'm glad me and you got to go see that too but yeah. that at the time blew everything away you know yeah you've got puppets on the side of the stage that are 20 feet tall you got like you said planes crashing into the thing that to start the show yeah you know? and then the slowly people are yeah. yeah slowly people are building the wall and they're putting up blocks and was like as as the band was you know, going away from you as you could, yeah. you know, were you kind of like, what, was there any, like, what yeah. is this going to be? Or like, you know, and, and it was weird. And to tell you the truth, Cam, some guys at the end of the night, that's what they were saying. You know, that was bullshit. You know, you couldn't see the band the whole second half of the show. What the hell's that? And everything. I'm like, and the other guys like, they didn't play anything off of animals or dark side of the moon. I'm like, do you knuckleheads get it? This is what it was. It told you what it was going to be on your ticket. You were lucky to see this. There's 21 shows in the world, you know, and this is what, and you got to see it. And like I said, now he's taking it all over the world, but this was back then. So yeah, it was weird, but I was totally into the whole theater, you know, of it. And you know me, I love Buddy Guy and I love Eric Clapton with a white light and a red light and a blue light and just listening to the music. But I also don't mind the production when it's, you know, done right. And that doesn't take away from Floyd's music. It's part of it. You know the sound and the the lights and everything and you know like i said up until that time like you said giant puppets the sound system it was absolutely the video screens on the back on the wall it made you forget about seeing the band because of the videos are just mesmerizing put it that way at that yeah. time and <laughs> sure. yeah no that makes sense yeah I mean, I mean but had you you had seen floyd previous to seeing the wall yeah, I had saw dark or I had saw um, animals. Animals, but like I said, so, I don't. We were like way at the back of the you know soldier field and don't really recall seeing the band as much. They didn't have video screens behind what they did back then, you know, and things like that. You heard it; it was great. Saw the pig and the whole thing, and it was awesome. But that's what started off the wall. Those shows were so big, and Roger Waters was losing disconnect from the crowd. We were kind of those guys. We were just back there chilling, listening to Floyd and thought it was great and everything, but it wasn't the experience of seeing Rush fourth row, you know, or yes, uh, yeah. or yes, fourth row, you know, where you're actually watching Steve Howe play, you know what I mean? Or, you know, seeing Eric Clapton or Stevie Ray Vaughan in the first five rows, you know what I mean? So Man. yeah, different experience entirely. Yeah. You people back there talking. You got people back there like no one you know, was talking during the wall. That room yeah. was quiet as could be. I mean, it was like you couldn't, yeah. I don't know how many people they fit in there, maybe 25,000 back in those days. But yeah, that place, it was unbelievable. Yeah. So just. It's, it is so funny to me to think, I mean, you've seen the videos that I do. And so it's all about people who yeah. are jaded <laughs> and don't, don't like what they're seeing and all that kind of stuff. So to, th to think about, I mean, when I was a kid, you would like, we would find ways to watch the old clips of the 1980 wall so i could like see it and we could talk yeah. about it and i would i was blown away by it so it's just sitting here today i mean like everybody when i was in college had a a wall poster on their wall you know like and that was in 20 or 2010 you know yeah. it, this 30 40 years later it's it's so funny to me to think of people walking out of that show being like dude they didn't even play sheep like I, I didn't know. get cheap. Yeah. The, I want to hear dogs. I, I, I distinctly remember that. Nothing on the dark side, really. You know, so but that's I want to hear money. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> the quadraphonic speakers would have been sick for money because they could have done like the quarters like all around the room <laughs> for like they could have done time like time <laughs> and they ended up doing that when you saw them later that's what happened you know mm. but when the airplane's flying over and stuff you thought a real airplane was coming all of a sudden it's coming from behind you and then it goes over your head and so does the sound in the room so you know from what i remember anyway i'm sure it was a little enhanced yeah. <laughs> right. I was gonna say, I, maybe the speakers weren't as good as you think they were uh, no, for the I'm time. Sure. But nowadays, you, you know, with nowadays sound systems, but that was like one of the first big rock productions. I mean, the Stones always put on a big show and stuff like that, and there were bands that you know did big productions, but nothing was like that. And I mean, I'm still pretty much Roger Waters' version of it is still one of the biggest productions in, in music now. So yeah, I mean, I I don't think I mean and all of the shows that I've seen have had some sort of video board or some sort of light show or something going on. I mean, literally every concert I've ever seen has had a, a video board, but still, yeah, that Roger Waters wall show that we saw at the United Center, or no, we saw the dark side of the moon at the United yeah. Center and we saw the wall up in Minnesota yep, at the exactly. XL Energy Arena or something like that. Yeah, but the original um, one with David Gilmore came up on top of the wall you know, you haven't seen them for a while, and all of a sudden, got, now I got snowy at I got snowy at, at my show. Yeah, I got snowy white. Yeah, so, and snowy was one of the original circuit band guys. You know, so and as Guy Pratt, who plays with Roger Waters and or not Roger Waters, David Gilmore and Nick Mason, he's been doing Floyd stuff forever. So yeah, but that was the show there, and then just a little skit that they're putting on with the holes in the wall. You know, yeah. Did, out of those things, you know, and he's like doing like one of my he's like doing one of my turns and like the he's in the apartment that's in the side of the wall and he breaks the glass. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You had it to was, be like, what the hell is going on? Right. Yeah, now? there was it was sensory overload, especially for the time being. And you like I said, we literally didn't talk the whole way home from that and then tried to explain it to people. And they were you, you can't, you know, you know, when you got it doesn't matter who you see and who's your favorite band or your favorite show. You can't when you know you can't describe those feelings to people you know only you feel that at the time and you know but they'll listen and sometimes you're lucky enough to be with other people you know that's one thing that bruce and i have i wish there was more of us there at the time but it was hard to tickets but that's one thing i'll always have with bruce is we got to see the original version of the wall you know and that it was that yeah that was pretty sweet that was definitely there's that there's that thing where you go back to work on monday and people are like oh weren't you uh you were up in LA for a concert and you're like, yep, pretty awesome. Oh, cool. Good for you. It's like yep. that weird little exchange. Like, do you really want it? Do, do you really want me to tell you? Cause it'll be a long, it'll be an hour long podcast. If I talk about it with you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> if you, if you, I, I usually, when I come back from fish or any of that kind of stuff, I'll be like, uh, if you like that stuff, it was really good. And people are like, I don't. So and I'm like, great. We're that's a here. good way. That's a good way to do it, Cam. Yeah, so, that's my little line. Yeah, man. But was there? I mean, did I hesitate to ask? But was there was there a bathroom song during this? Did you? Oh were, no, was there no, any no, no, like, no. So being the dumbasses we were back then, you know me. I'm from Chicago, so I'm not going to sit in the worst seats in the house. So we get there early and I con my way in the main floor and we're on main floor until the show is just getting ready to start. And then we get booted and the guy physically takes me out of main floor now because he's sick of me. But now we're on the mezzanine right off to the side and we watch the whole. Wait, wait, hold, wait, hold on. Did you like you got in a you tried to stand next to the guy in the aisle and then he's like, no, buddy. No, no, get no. We here. actually just scout around for empty seats. And then you yeah, move and then it there, and then all of a sudden somebody would come. So then you had to have two more in mind while you're waiting, because you know at any time somebody could come and take their seats. So then I got two over here. Well, some guy must have obviously watching me hip hop from seat to seat. And then he's like, "All right, you don't have seats down here. Let me see your seats." You know, and then you play that. I don't have the ticket thing, and try to walk a little bit well, faster than him. So it's right, it's right around here somewhere. Yeah. What is that? The what is that? The best aisle attendant of all time. Chill out. <laughs> This is Hall of Fame for you. While I'm messed up at Pink Floyd. I mean, we're, this, I we're mean, timing this all out perfectly here, and now i got to deal with this guy. 
I'm just like, yeah. I just want to be cool, man. Just like, like, but anyway, I was in the wrong seats. So now we shoved to the mezzanine. Totally awesome. We sit in the same seats in the mezzanine by my friend's bitch. And this is stupid. Let's just go to our seats. I'm like, go ahead. I know where they are. I'll meet you there. I'm sitting right here. So he stayed with me. And we watched probably the whole side one album and a little bit into side two, as I remember correctly. And then all of a sudden, people came. Why you would show up then for Pink Floyd doing the wall is beyond me. And there should be a statue of limitations where your seat is up now because you missed the opening. So, no. But anyway, so on the way there, now, now all of a sudden my friend's mad at me again now. So now we had to leave. And now we're obviously just going to go to our seats because now you're totally into it. You're in the most mesmerizing show of your life, just totally tranced out. And all of a sudden some guy taps you on the shoulder. Hey, you're in my seat. It's like, what? You know? No. So now it's like, all right, let's just go to our seats. So in the middle of the walk all the way from the main floor to the second balcony, we did hit the bathroom then. And then after that, you don't think about going to the bathroom. It was just, you just didn't want it to end, sure. you know? For sure. And then they're blowing the wall up at the end, and those guys are coming up on the rubble. And, you know, guys are like, so there's no encore? I'm like, what do you mean there's no <laughs> Who doesn't do an encore? <laughs> what the hell are you supposed to do after you blow the wall up? I know, right? <laughs> Like they're gonna be on the rubble, like all right, Thank and here's you. Mup, here's here's yeah, uh, yeah. Fearless. Your crazy yeah. diamond while we're standing on the rubble. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who wants to hear money? So no, I get it though. People want to hear what they want to hear, but you know, thank God most of the bands I listen to dictate the music that they want to play, and their fans are smart enough to uh, continue to follow them and you know, get into the groove that they're putting out instead of just wanting to hear the same song exactly the way it was played on the radio over and over and over and over because there's a lot of people that are like that. Nothing wrong about that, but, you know. Eh, I mean, kind of something wrong with that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> kind of boring, kind of makes it hard for me to tour with them, you know? Yeah, I wouldn't do, yeah, that's, no, that's not for me, but, no. Floyd back then was, like I said, even though the, the, the wall was all the same and planned out, but back then, even though that they're more of a rush type of band, they were very improvised. They they impro improvised a lot back then, put it that way. You yeah. know, uh, Floyd did. So, yeah, no, that, it was awesome. I just, uh, that was like the one that you're always searching for. And like I said, I was so happy when we got a chance that when Roger Waters saying that he was actually going to do the tour. So, you know, that was. Yeah. And same same with that. I mean, uh, obviously, completely different. And now you've got people who have this full knowledge of the wall, and they're you know they're huge fans of it, and everyone knows every song from it. And so it's a little like, how are you going to make the production as cool of a thing? And um, I don't know why I ever even asked that question. It was it was amazing. Each individual brick was a video screen. Yeah. They, yeah. It was yeah. It was it was nuts. It's I mean. Yeah. Well, he was really good at combining the theater. Like I said, uh, there was the between the two, I'm more of the David Gilmour fan, but I would never miss a Roger Waters tour just because it's the last chance to see that music live, you know, done by the guy who's done it. And now that band's been together longer than Floyd was. You know, I know. that's the, crazy. The, the band that, you know, um, Roger Waters has, you know, just like. Derek Trucks and O'Teal and Warren Haynes were with the Almond Brothers longer than anybody else. They're not the original guys that did it, but they were with them for 15 years. That was the longest span of that group together, you know, with J-Mo and Greg and, and those guys. So sometimes it's, you know, the new additions are not as, I don't want to say as good as the what it was, but, you know, it can be. And I, you know, I enjoy and especially within that music, like Pink Floyd or Almond Brothers or like, you know, the like the Dead & Co and like seeing that grouping together. Um, that's not music that you're going to get sick of playing because you get to improvise within it and grow within it all the time. And so you just get better and better within it. You don't get stale, at least yeah. at least from watching it. That's I don't get that. You know, like when I watch O'Teal with the dead, it's been like almost 10 years now. And same with Jeff, Jeff Comenti from the dead is. He's played with the dead longer than any keyboardist yeah. ever did, I, I'm pretty sure. And so right. he, you know, and he he is easily one of the best, if not the best member of that band because of the nature of the music, like you were saying, you get to improvise within it. And so 
you get to make it your own night in and night out and grow within it. And so, yeah, I mean, yeah, Otillo went right from Derek Chuck's band to Almond Brothers to you know Dead and Company, and now he's got his own band. But he's got you know he's got a, he's got a sick resume. Yeah, exactly, and he got to play his own stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, and go out there and you know improvise and do whatever. And you know he's definitely one of the best guys I've ever seen. When I when I finally start my band, I think I'm gonna try to get O'Teal. He's got, I mean, <laughs> guy's been great. guy's been doing it a long time. He's got a great <laughs> resume. Uh, I see, I see no reason why not. Personally, I see. I, I why wouldn't he want to play with you? <laughs> I don't get it. Me and my youth pastor chords. I think. <laughs> I think we got something. I gotta. I what. So after seeing the wall and like the massive production value that was, what was, do you remember the next concert that you saw? Uh, like, I was hoping that you wouldn't ask me that. I think I know what it is. Cause it, yeah, I told you like Rush is one of my favorite bands and maybe my favorite band. And so we got tickets for Rush and that was, you know, the permanent waves deal, which was a big thing. I mean, free will and spirit of the radio and all that. And yes. one of their best albums ever and Bruce, now I took him to Floyd. Now he's like, what are we going to see next? You know, he wants to go. He thinks I'm the concert guru now. He's like, you didn't know it was this cool to go to shows. And I kept trying to say it. Every show is like Pink Floyd, The Wall. Okay. Yeah. So he's like, no, I hear you playing Rush. I'm not into Rush, but I'll go check them out. Because I told him it's similar. You know, they got a video screen. It's great, you know, music and blah, blah, blah. And he had heard a couple tunes. And then we went there and it was really good. But it was the worst tickets I've ever had for a Rush show. Once again, as... You're looking at the stage you were all the way in the back we were in the first you know section off the main floor and but we we're still way in the back so he did not we got in the car he's like don't ever take me to see them again that was a very cheap imitation of pink floyd and i was like dude you have no idea what you're saying right now he's like no that was not even close to what we saw in la he's like, and, he's like listen both those guys might have had two necks on their guitar but there was not one wall built the whole show so. <laughs> There was zero production value. <laughs> and the movie so, screen, Neil, compared to the movie screens at Floyd, Rush has some funny stuff on there with South Park and whatever. And I love them. They're the best. But the movie yeah. screens at Floyd, I mean, the videos at Floyd are, they made a movie out of it, put it that way. You know, I mean, yeah. the, the animation there is like absolutely incredible. So you can't. Not, not, nothing funny going on at Floyd. It's serious business. No, no, no. It's face melting shit. You know what yeah. I mean? But uh, they and still Rush, Rush will, like show an old guy on a bike, like falling over or something, <laughs> or like, have, you know, chicken roasting behind them on the stage. Exactly. And, uh, George Canadian from Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. None of that shit going on at Pink. No. Floyd. So very and, serious. You know, he liked some of it, but he was he was not happy. And, you know, to tell you the truth, I. It wasn't one of my most memorable Rush shows after that either because I was just like, wow, you know. But, um, yeah. you know, those are probably the two of the worst seats that I've had for concerts because normally I'm pretty spoiled brat. You know me. I'm always yeah. up, up, up front, but every once in a while, like I said, I'll do, I, I would never miss a tour. So I would go in the back there. But yeah, Bruce was pissed. He was not, uh, he was not into Rush one, one bit. <laughs> Good loss, honestly. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people would kill to see that tour. That was a really good. That was, like I said, it was oh, yeah. a really good tour. So, but you know how it is when you, after you see, you can't always be, you know, if you throw a perfect so, game of baseball, that you know you're not going to throw another one next time out. So no. you got to, <laughs> you got to know that going in. And I did. I don't think he did. Like I said, he just he got blown away by Floyd, and then he just that really set the bar high. So he's telling everyone like Mark sees some really cool shows. Yeah, well, he was like a Leo Kotke fan, and like I said, Little Feet, and cool. you know, some guys like that. Not 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 bad guys. I mean, Leo Kotke's great guitar player and stuff like that. But it's just a little bit, you know, he's a moody blues guy, so a little bit different vibe at the Rush show. He didn't like. Uh, he didn't like Free Will. <laughs> Man, how many times did that band play that song over the next forty years? And you saw one of the first ones. Oh, I you know. You right? haven't seen one of the first You're limelight. Really, that's what I mean. Like, that's what you, people don't realize. Like, now you guys know this going in, and I appreciate that people your age still, you know, like our music, and that shows you how good it was that it's held the test of time that your generation 
and Kyle, you know, and people like that still appreciate these bands. But when you saw it back then for the first time, it was totally different, just like what you guys see now for the first time, and you'll look at it different, you know. But yeah, back then, when you haven't seen Neil Peart before, and then you walk in there and he's doing his Jack Black thing, but only it's for real, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <Just laughs> you know, you're just holy cow, what, what is going on right now, you know? Man. So, and the first time, you, you know, like everybody's heard Tom Sawyer on the radio 10,000 times. You know, but now when the first time you see it live, you're just like totally blown away. Like, wow, that's very that first note. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Place like. Yeah, and that was that's what I mean. And I watched a lot of those kind of bands grow up. You know, and that yeah. for Wash it was cool because they stayed together. But you know, like you know, I'm a big Yes fan too, and I didn't get to watch them grow up because every time you saw them, you had different guys in the band. It was always cool and it was always awesome. You know but it's, you know now we're gonna have these guys now we're gonna have these guys and they're all still playing great yes music and things but it's not like seeing rush where it's the same three guys you yeah. know and, and and you know that's you know you're a fish fan that's very similar you know could you oh, see somebody awesome. else playing one of those four spots yeah you just can't well people joke about it people joke I, about john mayer taking over for trey yeah I mean, people talk about playing for Neil Peart too when he, you know, passed away, and now, you know, yeah, I, yeah, that would be, yeah, you that would be tough can. to go see. That's why, you know, when people get into it about the Dead and Co stuff, and they're like, "It's not Jerry," I'm like, I, I, I kind of, I, I almost kind of agree with you. You should still go see the show because it's fun to go see the songs. Like, you know, like uh, we saw uh, Les Claypool and Primus do Rush, and like still awesome to like sit there and hear rush songs and sing along and, to and rush what are the rush and... people in the band supposed to do it's horrible that jerry passed away and stuff like that or john bonham or keith moon or whoever we can name but so what's the rest of the band supposed to do then so you have two choices you go do another band like you know dave Grohl did and then try to carry on when did foo fighters something totally different and went a different direction or you do what the who did and you get keith jones to fill in and He's with you, you forever, and then he becomes part of the band. And you know, I don't understand, but you know, and they should just be happy that they got to see both versions because you would have got loved to have seen Jerry or, you know, whatever. I did get to see Neil Peart. Yeah, I did get yeah. to see Neil. Peart, so. <laughs> I'll be I'll be that fan when if Rush ever goes back on tour, if there's like a new band, I'll be like, yeah, it's not really the same. Yeah, yeah I kind of saw <laughs> kind of saw Neil Peart, so. Yeah. Saw snakes and arrows. I'll have you know. So, <laughs> well, you know, we saw Queen without Freddie Mercury. It was your first show ever? Remember? So, I remember. Yeah, and that was awesome with Paul Rogers, and it was really cool and everything. But you know, I happened to see the original Queen back in the seventies too, and you know, that's not the same. But you know, both. Yeah, the, you know, both of those were great shows with Freddie live. You know, two years in a row at Chicago Stadium absolutely oh, incredible those might be up there with the best ever too you know very hard to, to not include those but we had a great time when paul rogers was the singer right and well i mean and that's a talk about an iconic piece i mean one of the most iconic pieces in the history of rock music freddie mercury and like you're still having a blast singing queen songs you know and like watching brian may and watching the rest of this band work and like yeah, so I was blown should away. I mean, appreciate that, right? Like, yeah, don't go I mean, there or be mad because it's Paul Rogers and that's stupid. I guess if you're a true Queen fan, you could say that or whatever. But I just appreciate the fact that if they're gonna, you know, professionals like that, if they're gonna take time to to go together, it's gonna turn out to be a good combination. Most bands don't just go out there and do something half-ass. Yeah, so. I'll never forget. It was right before that show. I read a, a review in the paper. We got the Journal Sentinel. Walkie Journal sent off the house and I was like, Dad, the guy from the paper said that the Queen tour isn't really that good. And then it's like, a, I don't even remember what he said, but it was just like, pretty much don't go see this because it's not worth your time. And you like without skipping a beat, you didn't even look up from what you were working on. You're like, I don't need some guy to tell me if I'm going to have a good time or not. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was like, 11. I'm like yeah, same, same for me. <laughs> Yeah, well, I remember that one of the first yes shows I saw. I still have the review. 
And I was so excited that they actually reviewed, because back then in 76 and 77, they didn't review shows like that in the paper. Like you yeah. shouldn't be going to see that kind of music. You know what I mean? What are you, <laughs> what are you doing? Well, like seeing people that have a half hour song, you know, who does that? So all of a sudden there's like a yes review in the paper from the you know show. And I was like, so, and I was like reading and I was like, wait a second, this isn't what happened at all. You know, this isn't the show that I saw. The show I saw was freaking awesome. So, yeah. and ever since then I was like, screw these guys. You know what I mean? So it's oh, cool yeah. to read about and you can, you know, inform your own opinion off their article, just like they're forming the opinion off the band. So they think the band sucks. I think his writing sucks. So <laughs> then how would I review your review? Yeah, yeah. How about that, huh? <laughs> but it wasn't that well done. Wasn't enthused by it. Thought the opening sucked. Ending sucked. Yeah. Thought you missed the whole yeah. point of the show. You so, know. How about that? Yeah. But no, I. Uh, yeah. I, ever since then, I was like, I ain't going that way. But I do remember that Queens. I do remember when you asked me that about the thing. So, but no, that was great. That was a great show. We had good seats. Band rocked. Yeah. I was just thinking about it the other day, you know, someone posted something like post about your first concert. And so I looked at the set list and uh, tie your mother down as the opener. I mean, in like, <laughs> I was going to see concerts for the rest of my life after seeing that. It's just like, down and it'll 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 and you know he like walked black. down a catwalk like we were kind of off to the side and he kind of walked down a catwalk that was like to the side of the stage and he was like right in front of us and i was just like yeah concerts are awesome <laughs> it's all about <laughs> concerts are so awesome I, i'm sure they're like i can't wait for that moment when i am at a show with my kid but i'm sure there had to have been some little like you saw me getting excited and been like oh absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I, you know, you were totally into it. It's not like you were just looking around and you were into the whole experience of everything. I could tell that you were enthralled with it. Yeah. So it was, yeah, that's, no, that's usually, that's usually my baseline is enthralled. <laughs> pretty psyched as a baseline. Yeah. Oh, uh, absolutely. That was a lot of fun. And where was that? That oh, was at the old um, forum and the Bradley center. The Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Yeah, in Milwaukee. Yeah. Now, now it's the Pfizer Forum, but yeah, it was the right. Bradley Center. Yeah. So horrible place to see a concert. Yeah, most of the places I saw shows were back in the day yeah. compared to the acoustics that they have now. You know, that's why we were so lucky when Alpine Valley was built in the seventies. We would just run up there for Chicago and spend the whole weekend up there. You know what I mean? And the yeah. shows that we didn't like, we would just sneak under the fence and go see those for free. So, you know, <laughs> but yeah, there was always somebody playing up there and that was all of a sudden built for concerts in a great place, you know, out of doors and everything like that. So you weren't shoved in the yeah. back alley of the air down brawl room in Chicago. You Next know. to the train. You're like, yeah. in the, it's like, Eric, it's like Aragon ballroom alley train. So you're like hanging out with your buddies and just like, you know, or old hockey arenas. You, you're from you in Chicago, the International Amphitheater. I mean, yeah. on, there was pro wrestling used to be in there, but that, they haven't used that place in for a long time. But I saw Rush through the Hemisphere shows there. That was one of the best ever. I saw Yes there. Um, yeah, that that place was the, the old International Amphitheater, but it was on the wrong side of town. Nothing was. You had to flush the toilet with your foot when you went there. You yeah, know what right. I mean? So it was, if you were going through the turnstile, we'd get stuck. And then the guy would be like, I don't know what to tell you. Get in the other line. So <laughs> guys in the back, what the heck's going on? You're like, I don't know, but I can't have kids now. And I just wanted to get into the show. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you, you told us a little bit at the beginning of the show, but what's, what's the next show you got coming up? We have Tedeschi Trucks coming up in Chicago or in uh, Milwaukee at the BMO. There's a new concert arena there right on the water. It's going to be awesome. And then we are going to go see them in um, Madison Square Garden at the end of September and then come back home and see Steve Hackett from Genesis in nice. the Paps Theater. It's the first time I'll be seeing him since I saw him with Genesis back in the 70s. I never got to see any of his solo stuff. I've been listening up to a lot to him lately, 
because I was watching doing a podcast with Alex Lifeson was on there about his new band. And he was mm-hmm. talking about, you know, listen, go back and listen to Jeff Beck. Even I know a lot of you older people have listened to Jeff Beck, go back and re-listen and things like that. And he's like, that's the most influential guitar player. And, you know, now that he passed away, he's like, Jeff Beck has different genre of music for anything that you're looking for, Jeff Beck plays. But everybody should go back and find some good Jeff Beck stuff. And it's hard, but there's such a great catalog. You can find stuff, yeah. you know. And um, he's, he's one of those guys that, yeah, there's there's a lot to find. And so it's kind of hard to find anything, you know. Right. And, and then he, band. he also said Steve Hackett, too, was a big influence on him now. And then um, I stumbled on some album that was from 2010. I forgot the title of it now. Shoot. That's what happens when you get old and you see Pink Floyd in the 70s. But um, no, that Steve Hackett stuff is really good. So we're gonna looking forward to seeing him in uh, Paps Theater. So he's gonna recreate some Genesis stuff, and then he's got a lot of really good solo stuff. But I mean, he's doing Van Halen type stuff on the guitar before Eddie. I'm not taking anything away from Eddie. I got to see Eddie lots of times, and Eddie's incredible. You know, yeah. there's nobody else like him. But Steve Hackett is really good too. Anybody going old school wants to see something different so those are what we have for the end of the year and then for next year we don't really have anything right now but those are the only three shows we've got lined up but it's a lot do you think you know. um what do you what do you think the chances are that i can get you to come to a fish show at the united center first fish show. Year? yeah they're playing they're probably gonna be playing around the time that i released this episode it's like the 14th 15th and 16th of what october um, I think we might like, be in New York then because we're going to New Haven first to get some New Haven pizza. Oh, Connecticut yeah. people. And, uh, What's up? and then going to New York to see the Tedeschi Truck Show. But I'll check let's I'll check my calendar and see, but I would love to go see the fish show and I would love to see Billy Strings. We gotta we gotta see Yeah, Billy I Strings. have not got a chance to see him and you know, he's the my new hot list. It's so- it's so funny to me to like I was just like, yeah, we got to catch you up. Like you've seen you just listed like 20 bands that anyone would have loved to see. <laughs> you've got 150 more that we didn't even talk about on this podcast. But I'm like, you really got to go see King Giz and the Liz Wiz with me for sure. Oh, yeah. I've been you, you were right about them. I like them, you know. Yeah, I knew yeah, you would. Gotta, you know, I don't know anything about them yet, but I can tell that that's a very good band. I, you know, I'm always like, you know me, I like to find new stuff. Yeah. No, I mean, you like you uh, were showing me stuff that my friends were listening to. I think like the first time I ever listened to Incubus was like in your car and you're like, these guys are good. You should listen to them. And then like (laughs) my friends, like two, (laughs) my friends, like two years later are like, Incubus is great. I'm like, yeah, my mom and dad like them. (laughs) Now they didn't like them anymore. Yeah. They're like, what? My problem is, you know, me like that original bra room did it me in for the general admission shows. Yeah. So, and I still have done them over the years, don't get me wrong, but I'm just not a general mission guy anymore. So I'm not into going, I want my seat. I, I, need, I need a seat. That's why, down down the Billy That's why I haven't seen yeah. Billy yet. Because most of his shows are general mission when he comes around. Yeah. So, but I'm looking forward can, to that. Don't sell yourself short, Dad. You can still throw a, an elbow with the best of them. <laughs> you, can still, you can still get in there. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I could go full right. Tony Soprano if I have to. <laughs> it, it, hey, listen, if we need to start uh, bashing some skulls, right? You're seeing the happy version right now. Yeah, so, right. You're not. This go, is like the go, version go, of a guy who Soprano pizza guy. If you want me to stick your hand in the fryer, or I can go football coach guy too. So you never stuck anyone's hand in a fryer. Eh, they, maybe just a little bit. Maybe just one. Bit. Maybe just one. Bit. <laughs> that was the best show ever. That was the best show ever. That was the best show, the best show ever. That was the best show. Man, there was fucked up stuff in there. Yeah, what the fuck was that about? All right. Well, that was some music from Jesus and Fartfinger again, and also a conversation with my dad. Uh, we had a blast. We had so much fun talking about stuff that we've talked about 10,000 times already together. Um, 
hope you guys enjoy that one. We have got a lot more special episodes coming up. Uh, so keep keep in touch, keep tuned in. Uh, look out for best show ever pod posts and and stuff coming out. Uh, but until next time, guys, have a great show. <laughs>